Asalaamu Alaikum brothers and sisters. Here we go again. Amadiya Fact Check Blog. Another episode. And remember, I'm here to give that information and that inspiration. <clears throat> so here we go. Today we're going to be talking about me on the Dean Show and what I said on the Dean Show, which mm. really, really upset these guys. Oh, yeah. Razi is upset. Razi is so mad because <clears throat> I went on the Dean show and uh, and I really gave it to these guys. Um, and they, you know, and I explained their lying. I explained how the Amadeo movement lies over and over again. They hide their beliefs. <clears throat> and uh, I'm just posting this everywhere as we speak. So, uh, so I'll tell you something else. Huram Shah did a Twitter space yesterday, which I recorded, <laughs> and I got in my back pocket. And let me just tell you something about this guy and the, and the things he's admitted to, like in the last, ever since, you know, he started uh, um, talking on social media. So um, yesterday, he admitted that he doesn't care what the Halifa does. The Halifa could rape Huram Shah, and he wouldn't say anything. You know, and, and this is what I'm telling you is actually happening. Um, and um, this was the attitude he always had, right? So so this is why he hated me and my other brother, Shahid, because we don't share this attitude. We don't like the Halifa. I don't worship a man. I, I don't listen to what this guy is saying. I don't care what he's saying. Are you serious? You know, you can't be serious with this stuff. You think I'm going to listen to some some uh, Pakistani guy saying he knows everything, but he can't pronounce the ayin properly? That doesn't make any sense, man. So that's what I'm going to cover in this video. And I'll, I'm just posting this. I'm not posting the link today. Not yet. I'll post the link when I'm done. But that's basically what I'm going to talk about. The comments of Hurum Shah, the extremism of Hurum Shah, how he... <clears throat> fanatically worked to oppose his brothers because we were against Ahmadiyyas. Uh, we were against his Hilafat. We were against all of that. And how he, he was five years older than us. So, uh, you know, when we got older, he's, he, he's a punk. Hurm can't fight. So, you know, he, he wasn't going to do it to people who were his age. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, <laughs> So let's just dive right, right into it. Here I was on the Dean show. Ruzzy makes a video. Ruzzy says, <coughs> so Ruzzy says that I mocked the prophets. That's a lie. But Ruzzy says that Eddie with the Dean show left Islam because he criticized Amadeus. Uh, Amadeus do took fear all the time. Anyone who opposes Amadeus, they say you're opposing Islam. This is what they say. So it's a totally aggressive persecution, discrimination. This is what they do, right? And then in Pakistan, they have the nerve to cry persecution. They said, oh, my God, we're being persecuted. All of this is happening to us. You're pers but in, in America, in the West, they cuss at everyone. They call everyone a non-Muslim to our faces. And then sometimes in a slick way. So this is what Razi did to me. He says, I, I mocked the prophet. I'm, I mock the prophets. Not true. Amadea movement mocks the prophets. The Amadea movement is an entire case of blasphemy. They say there's a second coming of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Astaghfirullah. What is that? That's mocking the prophet. They they compare the way Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam died with the way Mirza Ghulam Ahmed died. That's blasphemy. That's mocking the prophet. Um. They said Mirza Ghulam Ahmed talked down on Isa al -Islam. He even said that Yahya is better, astaghfirullah, Yahya al -Islam is better than Isa al -Islam. Not true. In the Quran, there's like five or six Rasuls who are mentioned with higher rank, and Isa is one of them. Isa is a top five. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> Razi need to knock this off, but he's an employee. Razi can't get a job without the Ahmadiyya movement. So look, here's what Razi posted. Look. Can you guys see this uh, uh, this tweet that he uh, directed at Eddie on at the Dean show? He says, "Oh, so to teach about Islam, Ahmadiyya, you invite an opponent of Islam and them. 
Who I'm not an opponent of Islam. You could thought that's not true, man. You know, but he's gonna make stuff up. This, this is what the could they do. This is what these guys do. So he's like, makes no sense. You will be exposed on my day. And may made the curse of Allah be on the liars. And then look, Huram responded too. Mobin's like, look, Al Mujahid. This remember the, the, this is the guy who called me. He said, You're just a bastard. Or something like that. He said, uh, he said, though they'll never invite us on on the well, why don't you invite me onto your program? Ruzzy, I've been backstage. Ruzzy won't allow it. He's scary. Ruzzy's scared. He big scared. Um <coughs> You feel me? So look, look, look what look what um Mobin, who's afraid to take to give his identity. Um, look what he writes. How about inviting us? And then Huram says they will they they'll never invite us. Huram, you can come to my house. I invite you to the house, bro. There's no one else here. Dolo, I'm solo. You could come straight to the house, bro. There ain't a weapon in here. You know what I mean? Not that I'm gonna tell you. Okay, so. Uh, and then this guy, Razi, and his boyfriend, um, Damon. That is his boyfriend. Damon Stengel has dreams of Qasem Rashid being naked, and he's fondling him. I, I, uh, Damon, I know. Uh, I know Amdi's that knew you and told me that you you used to watch that ladyboy porn. <laughs> That's what Damon is on. Damon's on that. Okay, so he also, Ruzzy also had this weirdo, Yusuf Pinder. <laughs> so so I'm going to talk about him too. And then this guy, uh, Solomon Omidipan, or whatever his name is. Um, he, he's, he's Nigerian, and uh, I'm going to talk about him too. He, he and his family were obsessed with the Mahdi, and, and maybe his mom converted, oh, the Mahdi, and they converted to, to the Qadiani Temple. <laughs> Because they, they thought he's the Mahdi. They didn't know his full beliefs. When they found out, it's too late. That's how they trick people. You feel me? So um, let me just post this video on Twitter. Not sure if I posted it on Twitter yet. Uh, I think it automatically, yeah, it automatically posted on, on, on Twitter. So, okay. We are off and running. What else did Rizzy, did Rizzy, what else did Ruzzy say? Ruzzy says, uh, a dawah is not required it's not muslims are not forced to do dawah it's optional just like marrying a second wife you don't have to do it just like marrying your cousin it's not a requirement of islam you know and i make fun of Hurum because he's married to his cousin because I, I know they don't even like each other you know um uh and that's funny you know you're married to your cousin bro it's, it's 2022 and you're married to your cousin, bro, and you didn't fix it. You didn't say, ah, uh, maybe I need to, you know, do something else. <laughs> That's hilarious to me, you know. <clears throat> so, and then I've looked it up. In Shafi fic, they don't even encourage it. In the Hanafi fic, they did. So that's where we're from, from India, from India, Pakistan. They all married. That's what they were doing, you know. But if you notice, they never had more than two or three kids each. Because it's hard to have a bunch of kids when you marry your cousin, man. You know? And and I proved <clears throat> that it was only done under extreme situation. It, it's only, a, it's allowed. You know, when was, was the verse, did the verse come down? During the war? Half the men are dead? So it, it's not under normal situations. You know? And you could take that how you want. If you want to marry your cousin, go ahead, bro. Uh, um, go ahead and marry your cousin. I don't care. You know, it's allowed. <laughs> you know, you fall in love with your cousin. It's like, why? You don't have to do that. <clears throat> so, so then Ruddy says, I mocked polygamy. All I said was, the, it came down during war. No man wants to marry two women. Let me break the secret to you. No man wants two women. You're, you're going to die at age 40 something. They will crucify you. Okay? You'll be, you're a tetherball in the middle. And they're going to absolutely have a field day with you, all right? So what else did he say? He says, I mocked the marriage of Aisha, radiyatala anha. What? Stop making it up, bro. You're making stuff up. That's not true. Um, he says, I mocked the Salaf Salah. Here's what I said. I said, we have computers in 2022. Thus, 
we have access to more information and quicker. We know how far the moon is from us. We know what the bees do exactly now. We have more information than the people before us. That's a common situation. <clears throat> so, again, a false accusation. Um, he said he says that I said I know more. All I said, I know computers. <laughs> the people before us can't even operate a cell phone. You know what I mean? So what are you even talking about? Um, and let's see what else. Uh, uh, he, he said I look down on Islam. You're not even Muslim, Razi. You're an atheist. Amdis are atheists. Amdis worship their Halifa. They are not allowed to question the Halifa. If the Halifa raped Ruzi, he's not saying anything. If Hurum's wife had an affair for the sake of Amadiyat, he'll cover it up. Because the Hilafat. It might damage the Hilafat. <clears throat> if Hurum needed to send his daughter to massage the Halifa, he would. Amdis did. Amdis sent their mom, mothers. Their aunties, their grandmothers, they sent them to go ma massage Mirza Glam Ahmed. This is what Ahmadiyyat is. <clears throat> so, okay. So let's jump into some of these issues. Um, he brings up the Kalama. So look, in the Kalama, all 124,000 prophets are implied. Ahmadis believe this also. So as a consequence, we believe Muhammad Sallallahu to be the last prophet. Okay? It, it's inferred. Just like uh, Amdi's infer that Mirza Glam Ahmed is included. And you know what's funny about that? They won't quote Mir Mirza Bashir Ahmed in his book, Kalimat al-Fasl, which was also published in the Urdu Review of Religions. They won't quote it. They won't even bring that up. So remember, there is be uh, of, um, beliefs of the Ahmadi movement that, that they're going to lie about. They're going to cover up. Remember, they say that they believe in Hatam and Nabiyin. They don't. But they'll say it. They'll say they believe in it, but they but they change the definition. So who is so arrogant? Who is a person that will not confess to the truth, the obvious truth? For example, Hurum is a terrible baseball player. He won't even admit to it. I, I'm a terrible swimmer. You don't want to put me in water. <laughs> you know, I can swim a little bit now because I'm working on it. But I me and water don't match. I admit to it. I'm a terrible artist. And I'm happy about that. I don't care about being an artist. I'm terrible at video games. And I don't care. I don't care that I'm not the best at video games. But see, what Allah put in my heart is I admit to my faults. I admit to my shortcomings. And I don't see it as a big deal. Right? Amethyst never confess to anything. They will never say it. They just cannot do it. And that's a major character flaw. So um, they won't admit that they have Mirza Glam Ahmed in their kalima. They won't admit to it. Well, then don't, you know, but don't call me a liar. <coughs> um, and yeah, so they call themselves Mahmoudi Kadiani. The, uh, look, this dude called the Lahori Amis Lahoris. Why is he, why is bro calling Amis Lahoris? Why? Because he doesn't consider them Amadis. So he calls them Lahoris. So why are you mad when we call you Qadiani? You know, and we, you know, you go to your temple. You shouldn't be mad. These guys need to confess to the truth, and they won't. So so he starts talking. So he's from uh, Nigeria. <laughs> and he's like, oh, and so look, I, I looked up his story. He said, uh, the, his conversion story, he said he just walked into a Qadiani temple, and he basically converted on the spot since since they don't believe in the miracles of Allah. <laughs> That's why he joined. He didn't read the books. Back in the 80s or whenever he converted, maybe it was the 90s, the books weren't available. So don't say you did the proper homework. You didn't. He does he hasn't even read Fisher. This guy, look, how are you going to talk about Amadi in Africa and you haven't read Fisher? Or Trimmingham? Or you haven't read about Augusto, or you don't know about the third sect of, of, of the Qadianis in Nigeria, or just go to the blog. I've written the whole history of Nigeria with, with the academic, the proper uh, academic references and et cetera. I've written the whole thing. This guy hasn't, but he's a talker. You know, that's the one thing with Hurum. He's a talker too. Hurum is trying to talk you into it. 
Purim's trying to, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, say something. And he's like, well, I'm going to say this. Look, I teach Islam or I tell about Islam the way it is. I don't care if anyone joins. I don't want no subscribers. I don't want no likes. I don't give a darn what you do. Okay, I am gonna. I tell it the way it is. What the research says it is. Okay, so um, oh, he brings up the hadith of uh, uh, Qadi, and he says, oh, there's this hadith that says the Messiah will come in a city called Qadi, um, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But he he hasn't even looked up the hadith. He has no idea about this hadith. So I challenge this guy. Look it up. But again, he doesn't have a social media presence. You know, um, so it's on the blog. All, all you got to do is look up a uh, QADI. And uh, I've written about the whole Hadith. It's all there. Okay, you, you just got to find it. All right. Um, and there's another Qadian in, in Iran, too. So, so figure that out. So, okay, let's see what else. Um, oh, so he says, so this guy says, check this out. Solomon, he says, oh, the elites were uh, became Lahori's. What about Dr. Abdul Salam? He's such an idiot. Dr. Abdul Salam wasn't born yet. When the split happened, Dr. Abdul Salam was like negative 13. He, he was born in like 1927, I think. What, what is this idiot talking about? So this is where you get these Qadianis who, are not, who aren't experts in the literature, who say things that are over the top incorrect. Then he says, what about Zafar Lahan? Zafar Lahan was in college at the time. He was in London when the split happened. He probably didn't even know. He won't even admit to it that he, that he doesn't know. Okay, so, so that's where people don't admit to the information that um, they have. Okay, then Mirza Ghulam Ahmed said the Quran left the earth, not the deen. In, in, in the Hadith, for, um, chapter 62, verse 3, <coughs> the Hadith states, even if the deen went to the Soraya, anyone can get to it. Even the Persians can get to it. Everyone can get to Islam. Everyone can get to the faith. Everyone can get to it. Not the Quran. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed takes the wording out and says, bring it back. And then says it's the Quran. So, so that's exactly what Mirza Ghulam Ahmed did. He claims to have brought it back. And that's against Hadith. That's against the Quran. The Quran never left. Allah preserved it. You know, and Mirza Ghulam Ahmed says it left because Muslims wouldn't eat pork. How silly is that? Okay. So let me just go through some other notes here. Put on my glasses really quick. Um, oh, so, so, so here's the thing. Do Amdis believe in additional prophets? On the surface, they do. But in reality, they don't. In reality, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed is the Hatamul Hulafa. In, in reality, they say only one prophet was left to come. This is what they say. This is what they believe. Any claimant of prophethood, they've kicked them out. So technically, they believe Mirza Ghulam Ahmed to be the last prophet. And he invented the term Hatamul Hulafa. So this, these guys, don't they're misrepresenting it. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed said he was the only one to be a prophet in the entire Ummah. So... This is the Amity belief, man. And these guys won't confess to it. And that's the main issue. Um, so, okay. Let's see what else. Um, so, yeah, it's true. My parents turned on me when I was 11, 12 years old. This is what I explained on the Dean Show. Huram turned on me, you know. And since he was five years older, he was being a bully. But, you know, when I was 14, he's scared. He didn't even eyeball me ever again in his life. He knows. If he eyeball me, I'd knock his head off. You know, and I didn't want to. I showed mercy on him. I, I you know, uh, now in hindsight, I should have at least choked him. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have choked him till he can't breathe, but just a little bit, like 20 seconds, just to let him know, you know, you're, you're a snake and you deserve this treatment. You actually deserve it. For what you did. You turned on your brothers for Amadeus. You looked the other way when your dad gave away things to people. Okay? My dad lives his life to give things away to people to get them to convert to Amadeus. 
admit to this, confess to this. In my dad's village, he gave away tractors. He was buying people TVs and dish antennas. And since I uh, questioned the Hilafas, he wasn't going to give me a penny or a nickel. So I separated when I was 18. I was gone. I'm like, look, you know, who has that much wisdom at 18 to see this? Allah put it in my heart. So, okay, let me see what else. Um, yep, my, my, my dad was an extremist. They call the cops on me now. Um, Jesus in India at 120. Amdis believe that, that Isa al-Islam died in India at age 120. How silly is that? How stupid is that? And then in, in Jesus in India, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed even says that Isa al-Islam taught the Buddha. He's the teacher of the Buddha. That's ridiculous. The, the Buddha was many years before Isa al-Islam. So what the hell, man? So Okay, I'm just going all over the notes here. Let me take another quick gander at these notes. Um, um, oh, so look. So then they uh, quote these hadiths on the Mahdi. They say the world will be full of, it, full of injustice. They say uh, the ulama will be the worst. Well, so Mirza Ghulam Ahmed didn't fix it. It's still 125 years later. What's changed? We're all still under, under colonial rule. Colonial rule didn't end. Look up the British Commonwealth. They still own India. They still own Pakistan. They still own Australia. They still own South Africa. They still own Canada. They still own Belize. The list is endless. There's islands. The French Empire didn't end. Uh, the Portuguese wouldn't leave India after 1947. Look that one up. Um, uh, the Dutch still, uh, um, Indonesia is a puppet government. So what, what is Suriname? What is Dutch Guyana? You know, look all this up. Okay, so so the, uh, they quoted these hadiths in terms of the Mahdi, but the, none of those even came true. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed's a failure. He didn't do anything. The Mahdi was going to start an Islamic government, and that didn't happen. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed did not do that at all. He failed. <clears throat> so that immediately disqualifies him. It's game over, bro. So why are they even quoting these hadiths? I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. Stupidity. Being brainwashed. You know, they're again, they're misrepresenting people, which is what, what they did to me. They misrepresent me. They misrepresent Sheikh Hassim. They miss look at Ruzzi's channel. He's misrepresenting all these Islamic scholars. He's saying they believe this and they believe that. It's all a lie. It's all a lie. This is what they do. This is what Mirza Glam Ahmed did. Mirza Glam Ahmed misrepresented Ibn Abbas. He misrepresented Imam Malik. He misrepresented everyone. In Jesus in India, he said all Muslims believe that Isa al-Islam lived to 120. That's a big lie. Big lie. You think he cares? Hell no. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed didn't care. So Hurram Shah did the same. Sayyid Hadam Hassan Shah lied the same. They misrepresented. Okay, let me see what else. Um. Oh, look, look. So look. These guys were saying, if you can't read Urdu, you don't know Ahmadiyya. You <clears throat> Hold on real quick. Let me just shut my door. Okay, so remember, Al-Mujahid, whatever his name is, Mobin, Huram, Razi, all these silly Amdis said, if you can't read Urdu, you don't know Ahmadiyya. Well, Yusuf Pender, you guys want to see him? He can't read Urdu. Why did he join then? What about this guy? He can't read Urdu. None of these guys can read Urdu. Huram can barely read Urdu. Ruzi barely learned to scribble scratch. If he takes a test in Pakistan, like the high school test, he'll fail. He does not know Urdu. He's lying. He couldn't pass a high school examination <coughs> in Pakistan. Okay, so knock it off, boy. All right, let's see what else. Um, Amli mullahs are the worst creatures under the uh, uh, d yeah. So that hadith is 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 technically true. Then he then he says I support Barelvis. 
What is he talking about? I don't know any Bareilles. I don't know. Everyone I've ever came across simply said they believe in Islam. And they called themselves Muslim. And some are Shia. We don't even ask, man. <laughs> Everyone just says they're Muslim. No one even says they're Diobandi or Bareilles. So knock it off. You know? And I'm nice to people. How about that for a concept? Christians, I I support them. I, I, I know Christians. I'm some of my best friends. I know some Hindus. I don't attack their religion. I don't attack people in their religion. So this is a hard concept for Ruzi and Hurum to understand. Is but but their slogan is love for all, hatred for none. But they hate everyone. I, in fact, love everyone. <laughs> So I don't I don't go and try to convert people. I don't care what anyone's religion is, man. I don't judge people based on religiosity or religious whatever the word is or what religion they are. Okay. Um so they asked, how is Isa going to know the Quran? It's it's actually in the Quran. Allah will teach him, right? And I I don't have the verse handy, but you can hit my blog. Uh, uh, Isa will know Isa al Islam will know the Quran because Allah will teach him, and that is in the Quran. And I mean that's a little controversial, but look it up. All right, let's see what else. Yeah, so look, so Amni say uh, Isa al Islam was only sent to the lost sheep. <laughs> then why did he go to Tibet? Why did he teach the Buddha? You know they've contradicted themselves. So. Uh, it's contradiction after contradiction after contradiction. Um, then, uh, here's what I said on the Dean show. On the Dean show, I said, and these follow Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, not the authentic Hadith. In fact, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed called Abu Huraira a gubby because he authenticated the physical return of Isa al-Aslam, the son of Mary. And... Ruzzi didn't show where and how Amdis believe if you eat pork, it makes you gay. It's Mirza Thairam. Same thing with the hermaphrodite thing situation. That's Mirza Thairam. He's the one who, who solidified all of that. But Ruzzi will not admit to this. He will not present information properly. He will not confess to his errors. Uh, and then he deflects to the Barelavis and Diobandis. <laughs> They're good for this. They'll be like, oh, the Diobandis are this. We're, we're not even asking about them. We're asking about you, Kutta. Why are you talking about the Diobandis? They always deflect, and they're taught to deflect. Um, okay, and it's true. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed never gave a hutbah Jummah. <laughs> you know, and it's funny because Huram gives the hutbah Jummah, or he used to give it <clears throat> at like the local Ahmadiyya temple when maybe the Marabi was at the mall shopping or something. <laughs> He'd say, oh, okay, all... And, all they do is give a summary of what the Halifa said. So it's not like uh, a knowledge, given knowledge to the to the people. Um, and, you know, Mirza Ghulam Ammon uh, drank tonic wine. He ate opium. You know, he got massages. That's what I'm saying. If they asked Huram to send his wife to the Halifa to spend the night, he would. Easy. He'd be like, go. You, you need to go handle that. Okay, and, and and this is why what I'm telling you why Amadea is wrong. Okay, so let's see what else. Um, oh, so so remember, I was in a family business situation where maybe I was gonna get something out of it, but you think Hurum was gonna share? You think Hur he ran away from home three times because he didn't want to work with his brothers because we don't do this Amadea thing, you know? If we get a business, we're gonna help our children and our wives. <laughs> We're not going to give the money to converts and give converts jobs, you know, like Hurum did and like my dad did. We weren't going to do it. So so they said, okay, kill them. Or let's make their life so hard they kill themselves. You see what I mean? Um, so, all right, what else? Oh, look, he refused to speak about justice for Nida. I mentioned that in the Dean show. How come, he didn't, how come he didn't respond to it? I also mentioned the child pornography case by Ruzzi's colleague. This guy, he's a colleague of Ruzzi. 
this is Ruzzy's homie. This this is big bro. Ruzzy was a rookie at Jamia when when this guy this kutta was a dalla. <laughs> this guy was the main man. You know he didn't comment. Why didn't you comment, Putter? Huh? It's good. Well, it's because Ruzzy got his own little boyfriend triangles going on. So, okay. Let's see what else. <coughs> okay, so I also mentioned chap uh, chapter 23, verse 50. They didn't mention that. Show us in Hadith or Tafsir where anyone said chapter 23, verse 50 is about Kashmir. Show us. You can't because it's a lie. It never happened. And here's the reason why am Amnes are rapists. is because they were given a state within a state. So since they were given a state within a state, they were raping everyone. Because who's going to stop them? You see what I mean? This is all learned behavior. And uh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed died of dysentery, watery diarrhea. Hurum. Why don't you look up Sirat al-Madhi, first edition? I posted it on the blog. Why don't you look it up? Look it up and tell me why it says in the first edition, 1923, that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed uh, did diarrhea on the floor next to his bed because he couldn't make it to the bathroom. And it's all over the floor. Why did it say that? Why did you change it in the 1935 edition and all subsequent editions? Okay. Uh, Amdis also believed that um, uh, uh, Iblis was a human. They didn't talk about that either. Um, the Amadeo weird beliefs on jinn. I also talked about Qasim Rashid. They didn't touch any of this stuff. And Amadeo's deny all miracles. <laughs> so knock it off. And I think Ruzzi uh, 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 quoted uh, Tuberi, and he misrepresented them like he always does. So, all right, let's go to the next page. So, okay. So then, then he says he believes in chapter two. Uh, 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 the, these kutte say that they believe in Mirza, uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be the Hatman Nabi'een. That's a lie. Because they changed the definition. So I've already talked about that. Okay, then um, Ruzi tries to say we have the same beliefs. We both believe a prophet's going to come. Uh, that's not true. We believe Isa Aslam will return. Not a new prophet. They believe, in all, they, they believe a new prophet is here. And he's the last. We don't believe that. Um, then they say, then they say, well, it does mean last. Hatam does mean last. Last law bearing. So here's where the contradictions come in. And and uh, um, on that Twitter space, uh, Mobin was contradicting Huram on Takfir. Uh, Tariq Chaudhary was contradicting Huram on Takfir. They were like, Huram, it's Takfir. It's Huram's like, well, we don't do it openly. What difference does it make? Um, and then Ruzi doesn't mention how Mirza Ghulam Ahmed denied prophethood in 1891. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed argued that the Messiah was a non-prophet for 10 years. Ruzi avoids this. He doesn't want to talk about it. You know? So let's see what else. And then law-bearing. There's no such thing as a law-bearing prophet in the Quran. They don't exist. There's no law-bearing in the Hadith. It doesn't exist. It was a weirdo. Uh, Ibn Arabi, who said these weird, strange Sufi. Anytime you get around a Sufi man, you got to be careful what them guys say because it's hard to follow. But <clears throat> they came up with this stuff, right? And even then, they said true dreams are 146 the prophet. They didn't mean no prophet. They meant just dreams and etc. cetera. Um, but they twisted it. And uh, Amdis used to believe huh, more prophets are going to come. Not anymore. Now they believe their halafat is eternal. It'll never end. So if their halafat's never going to end, who's the next prophet then, right? So not going to happen. They've even said maybe a halifa will claim to be a prophet when things get bad or something like that. Um, let me see what else. Let me see. And I've been going for over 30 minutes now. Um, yeah, so he also didn't mention that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed called Abu Huraira a gubby. Why would they mention it? These guys are not going to mention these things, man. They're incapable. Uh, and, and then what else? Uh, oh, the, they said the, the Jews and Christians will remain till the day of judgment. Here's what those verses meant. It meant up to the return of Isa. 
Because Isa al-Islam and the Day of Judgment, it's all connected. Isa al-Islam is a sign of the Day of Judgment. That's what it's referring to. Okay? So it does match chapter 4, verse 159. And Mirza Ghulam Ahmed made these silly arguments in the first place. Um, of course, they deny miracles. Uh, they believe that Isa died at 120. I covered that. Um, then they quote Z uh, Zakir Naik. And they're like, uh, <coughs> Zakir Naik says, you will take on the qualities of what you eat. Okay? But Zakir Naik di didn't say eating pork will make you gay. He just says you'll be a filthy animal. That doesn't mean you're gay. So knock it off, bro. You know, but these guys lie. How could they tell tell the truth? Now, the thing about pork, it had trichinosis in it, which was a bacteria that was not, not good for your stomach and probably some other things that aren't detectable at this point in time. So, okay, let's see what else. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed died of cholera. Um, they falsely accuse the messenger of Allah of something similar. Um, Ruzi, Ruzi quotes a hadith of the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about peeing in a skin while he's on his deathbed. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed is diarrhea all over the place. You can't control it. Why did Ruzi make this comparison? It's blasphemy. It's kufr. It's mocking the prophet. And then he accuses us of it. So, so this is why Ahmadiyya is banned. Uh, no, no dawa in Bangladesh, Pakistan. Their books are banned because of these. Their, their, their beliefs are so offensive to Muslims. It had to be banned, right? And Muslims were still allowed it for, um, for many years. Um, and so, so here's a question. Um. Why do the Lahori Amdis believe that Isa al-Islam, Astaghfirullah, had a biological father? Where did they get it from? They got it from Nur al-Din. Nur al-Din never agreed with Mirza Ghulam Ahmed on this. Look it up. I've done the research. <laughs> so this was the issue. Nur al-Din and Mirza Ghulam Ahmed disagreed on the birth of Isa al-Islam. Nur al-Din wanted to say he had a biological father. And the Qadianis never objected to it. Go read Qadiani literature. They've never said the Lahoris are wrong for believing this. Never, not once. Never. Look it up. Look, read uh, Anna Sadaka's. <laughs> the uh, Halifa talks about the differences between them and the Lahoris. He never says the birth of Isa is, is a difference of opinion. Never, not once. So... What can I say about these kutte, man? Um, let me see what else. Oh, so Yusuf Pender, <laughs> look at this guy. Yusuf Pender says, uh, oh, if you become an Amdi, you get a job and a woman. He says it took him five years. It takes time. You, you might not get it. You know, in Canada, in America, you got to be Amdi for a year now and pay chanda before you, you can marry. So if you're a convert, you got to wait. They made Yusuf Pinder wait five years. Everyone's different. So Yusuf Pinder waited five years. Then, then they said, okay, we trust you. And he, he didn't say where he works at. We don't know what job he does or how he got that job. We also don't know Solomon, how he got to America. He didn't say, was it a work visa? Did you marry an Amdi girl in America? Tell us. Tell us, bro. Let us know, Kutta. Okay, what else? Uh, okay, so basically, uh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed copied Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan. And that is the story. With the denial of miracles. The only thing he disagreed with him on was, was prayers and the effect of prayers. Um, <clears throat> everything else is a copy. Copy-paste job. Pretty much. Um, Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan was the first Muslim to deny the, that the Mahdi was going to return. He's the first one to deny that Isa al-Islam would return. That never happened before. Um, so, okay. Let's see what else. All right. Okay. So he wrote, um, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed wrote a commentary on Surah Fatiha. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed didn't write nothing. 
And his commentary, his alleged commentary on Fatiha is trash. All right? No one's even reading it. No one even cares about what he wrote. Mirza Glaman was half dead, man. He never wrote anything. Uh, Amadea is blasphemy. Okay? And to Yusuf Pinder and, and Solomon, I've written 2,000 essays on Amadea. Try me. What have you written? You don't have a blog where you could write what you think? See? It's easy to make a blog, man. Um, so, so, and then they said no one has a leader. What about, uh, what about the Agahanis? What about the Tablighi Jamaat? What about the country and government of Iran? Shias have a leader. They even have a government. They even have a country. It's a puppet government, maybe. Uh, the Shah of Iran was a puppet dictator. And the revolution started, you know. Okay, but they're lying. So um, these, so um, Solomon says he had a debate with a guy in 1997, and he's like, the guy died. <laughs> what about how Mirza Glam died, man? They go back to this thing saying, you know, uh, someone's death proves something. We all got to die. Someone's death really doesn't really, I mean, come on. A person like Mirza Glam is okay. We'll accept it now. Look how he died. All right. Let me see what else. Oh, Yusuf Pender quotes the Bible. Muslims don't quote the Bible, bro. We stay in the Quran and the Hadith. We got no reason at all to go to the Bible. He does. So do Amnis. They quote the Bible whenever they need to. Because it's a mashup. It's a mix-up and a mashup. And Because he was saying prophets don't come from the sky. That's how Adam literally got here. Adam al-Aslam literally. Uh, he was sent from the Jannah to the Arad. He literally came from a different realm, a, a, whatever you want to call it. We, we don't exactly know what Allah has created. Um, but okay, let's see what else. And I'm almost done here. Oh, that's pretty much it. Okay, so with that being said, now I'm going to give out the link and anyone can come. Um, so let me post this link all over the place <clears throat> uh all kadiani hold on let me type this out all kadiani and these islam hating and these are allowed to come so they said we'll, we'll we, we never invite them here's an invitation kutta you can come through. No one cares. Ask your silly questions. We will answer them. Okay, let me just copy and paste this. Here we go. So we got about five minutes. Let's see who shows up. Uh, I'm trying to do this in under an hour. So let's see. Let me just post this in the different groups. And then in the meantime, I'll show everyone what Huram has been saying. So in the recent Twitter space, Huram's like, oh, it's a sour subject. We don't want to do takfir. And then the other guys are like, no, it's pure kufr. You know, when when Muslims deny uh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, they're doing kufr. He even, uh, Mobin says he spoke to a Murabi. He says, I spoke to a Murabi. First he raped me. Then, then he told me that everyone has to believe in Mirza Ghulam Ahmed or they are not a Muslim. Well, so then why did you uh, uh, edit your books? Why did you why did you edit uh, Tuzkara to, to 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 get that out of there? Why did uh, Qasim Rashid lie about it? Um, these are all the questions you you could then need to answer, and I know you're not going to do it, but it's whatever. So I just posted the link in a hell of places. <coughs> so okay, let's see who falls through. Oh, Brother Ali. Hello. Good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Assalamu alaikum, bro. How's it going? How do you All think? Good. What do you All think? Good. And I was listening to your stream on uh, YouTube. Well, you raised uh, many, many points. And uh, I really doubt anybody will come up to your stream and answer your uh, 
concerns. While they are uh, facts, not concern, let me correct myself. So, yeah, I mean, uh, you mentioned a few things which uh, I would prefer to share with uh, our audiences. Like they believe uh, Iblis was a human. So I got those videos lined up. So why not uh, share with our audiences? So, yeah, I'm going to share those ones in the background. So you can actually uh, don't need to share my screen. Only the audio is enough because I don't want you to get a strike. OK, so just uh, hide that one. I'm going to play the first one. Let's see if we do that. और आदम अलैहि सलाम के किस्से में जिस वजूद को इबलीस कहा गया वो भी इंसान ही था और उसको इबलीस उसके सिफाती नाम के तौर पे उसको कहा गया कि इबलीस इस वजह से कहा गया कि वो सख्त मायूस इंसान था इसीलिए अल्लाह ताला कुरान पाक में फरमाता है मायूसी मोमिन के करीब तक नहीं पड़े मोमिन मायूस नहीं होता चले जी आज का प्रोग्राम यहीं पे खत्म करते हैं आज के प्रोग्राम में सिर्फ उन्हीं सवालात को लिया गया है जिनका ताल्लुक इस प्रोग्राम के साथ well that is their ask md imam yeah and <laughs> not muslim imam md md imam right so <laughs> yeah so you can notice how much disinformation they are spreading they are going against surah bakra and wherever there is a, a discussion about creation of adam alayhi salam and shaitan right they basically go against Quran's teaching. So he was saying, Iblis, Shaitan was hopeless human. Right? And Quran says clearly he was one of uh, a jinn. Right? It's nothing to do with a human. So if he was a human, then why Alamiya created Adam then? Why Alamiya asked all angels to bow down to Adam and even Jinn, you know, uh, Shaitan. So it should be other way around then. If okay. if Iblis was the first human, then Adam should bow down to him. These are stupid people. They don't understand just, you know, simplicity of uh, a Quran, which explains all, all these events very clearly. And there's another um, video I'm going to play. The second one, listen to that one as well. So you heard that another Imam, their MD Imam, saying Iblis was human. Now, I mean, there is no doubt what we say. They are atheists. They don't believe in Islam. So our, our discussion, when it comes to uh, this cult, our in, uh, discussion is mainly the intellectual dishonesty and counterfeit version of Islam. That's what we try to make other people aware. They are not representing Islam or teaching of Islam. They are spreading disinformation and they are doing intellectual dishonesty. So we have to make those people aware who are consuming their contents, their haram contents. It becomes invalid. And secondly, and most importantly, they have zero credibility. Their credentials are not accepted by any Muslim country or any Muslim institution. They created their own institution. They created their own ulma. Yeah. And they have zero credibility outside their own cult. So that is the reason we try to make all our audiences fully aware because you are consuming disinformation and, and 
they are doing intellectual dishonesty and theft here so that's what i wanted to contribute toward those points so you already explained in the details and i don't need to drill down again and uh, that was just one one or two good examples yeah right right and uh, uh thank you for explaining that um I i've tracked it here's the issue uh the western world found a skull that was a little bit thicker or the forehead was a bit bigger and they said these are neanderthals and humans evolved from neanderthals amnes believed them immediately uh cheti they believed them. they will believe anything whatever west says so that's what they came up with yeah. so i so i tracked it to 1947 uh they published an english commentary of the quran from qadian in nine, this is before the partition a few months and in it they were saying the neanderthals were jinn and they evolved right so i also went and checked um, muhammad ali's 1917 commentary and he says something similar that human beings were made in pairs and it's like it's like okay that's true but initially adam al islam was the first eve was the second so that might have happened later but um so yeah hit the blog uh um uh um see the work that we've already done this all comes from mirza glam amin the theory of evolution was there and mirza glam amin was already saying these things these guys just expounded on it all right and we have a few callers um brother ali you um you want to go see ahead them? and take uh, those guys on board thank you okay mr me are you there do you have anything to say about today's topic you got about 20 seconds may uh maybe less than that and in the meantime while we're, while we're we're waiting for me to figure out what they want to do check this out here it is brother look uh <clears throat> in 1947 the qadiani amnis began claiming that humans exist so i haven't found it before that maybe there's a reference between 1914 to 1947 but this is the one that i found um and i made a video on it It talks about chapter 2 verse 35 36 where uh, uh, Adam al Islam was living in Jannah um and uh, Allah created Eve and they sent them both to the Ard so uh um check out their 1947 um uh uh Tafsir Kabir also sort of came out like a few volumes a few chapters um and he says the same thing when when uh before Adam there were already humans on the planet and you can even read the introduction to the study of the holy quran <clears> the <throat> 2016 online english edition um he continued to claim that humans were already on the planet were jinn the humans that were on the planet were jinn and they haven't they hadn't fully evolved brother this is blasphemy um okay and and then i give the i, I look here's the here's the hadith here's what he said in uh, uh arya arya daram he said just like uh um a uh, eve was created from the rib of adam each boy's wife was created from his rib so it's like what did, what is he saying here and this book is not in english we're challenging them to translate this in english he makes another similar statement 1907 1908 in the review of religions we find similar statements muhammad ali like i mentioned 1917 malfuzat in 1960s he says this again um in the five volume co uh, commentary 1988 and then i posted um hadith on on adam al islam it's all laid up all you guys got to do is read so me didn't talk let's see who the next guy is uh, arif assalamu alaikum um uh, brother arif are you there wa alaikum assalam shah sahab how are you i'm doing good wa alaikum assalam alhamdulillah I hope I hope you remember me I'm calling from London I'm Dawa's friend isn't it that's a code word we have right that is a code word that we have how's it going brother yeah uh, so everything you, is fine about, and it's nice so, uh, to I'm sorry go ahead brother oh this uh, let me let me let me take only a few seconds um Let me say this I am absolute pleasure to have Ali bhai here I'm great fan of him right mashallah academically he is right on the game like you and I I would be very shocked and surprised that if some
people on 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 Ahmadiyya cult have brain and they live in UK and will not have understand what Ali Bai was showing through all charity commission and all that, right? And uh, very we are very blessed to have him and have you and your face always shining as since you been become Muslims. I have seen the people from their cult very closely the more older they get unfortunately their skin their face become like a like a cardboard allah forgive me saying that but that's the reality i have seen it and um, the the job you guys are doing mashallah may allah reward you the highest place in jannah army and 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 uh, shah sab i just caught you last 5 minutes and regarding razi is absolutely a dipstick have no academic knowledge but my point is uh, shall sab address sometime in the future when you can so all these doctor yo yo and all these guys yeah that's the one i don't know the right one shall sab do um briefly in 20 second whenever you get time uh, kind of elaborate about him um and um i have realized another thing that whenever ali bhai or you do some program nail them down on um, on the uh, on the channel mta whatever it is they do similar to answer to it they put their khalifa there and they put the answer to it and mashallah that's why they are shaken and and we, i'm 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 gobsmack the work you guys are doing especially by and you academically it just right on the ball and let me tell this razi dipstick and that jerry you know he's not jerry he's jerry and they all all talk about oh what's your firqa what's your firqa listen dipstick when you live outside pakistan or even in pakistan you don't care you just stop and read sala namaz in any masjid nobody ask you in especially in our country shah saab and ali bhai we just go my kids go to somali masjid i read juma in uh, syrian masjid sometime in uh, sri lankan masjid there is no discrimination they are just making these qadiani scared of that and these the these people from these qadian qadiani jamaat they need to go out and see over masjid nobody stops them right see how it's done janaza uh, uh, the pray of the janaza is done i, I work voluntarily with somali masjid pakistani masjid in janaza service right and we don't discriminate who we are doing with it right and uh, it just done I'm sorry I'm taking too much time but I'm so excited to be on the same platform where you are Ali bhai and other brothers are and a brother of Zal as well mashallah he has a very witty side as well he nailed it right always always a pleasure and I try my best brother Bashir to listen to you always and you know me uh, I'm sure Ali bhai as well we are waiting for you the day you land on London with a red carpet right I'll come and pick you up I'm very close to Heathrow, so you don't need to worry. I treat you nice food, and mashallah, your face is glowing. Glowing. I'm so happy that Allah has chosen you, Ali Bai, and other brothers. That you could go on other way around, right? Like other ETS dipsticks running around like a like a headless chicken. But uh, uh, Shah Sab, uh, do address and Ali Bai do address all these guys who are coming on other our brothers' channels, your channel, or doing these online social media. program there is a new channel ali bhai uh, some shisha islam yeah aina islam do look into it i'm sure you are top of that as well he is saying very stupid thing they just did a recently a stream regarding hazrat suleiman al islam and they call it hazrat suleiman al islam nauz billah ki gustakhi allah maaf kare main keh raha hu so uh, please do address whenever you can and i'm just happy to be on your platform and thank you very much uh, taking me in brother bashir and uh, question is are these two qadianis who are doing this yo yo and all this law doing streams one side them the, the these people from the cult has to understand how hypocrite they are one side they are telling the people not to go on social media the other side these uh, dogs who stray dogs who's been left on social media they are running online program say they are not even listening to their jamaat so there is no khraj for him there is no khraj for there is no Shah Sab, there is no Khraj for Sandy Shah so far, isn't it? <laughs> Can you imagine that? Or a common sense level? 
<laughs> yeah, they probably said, hey, you need to take a vacation to Rubwa. We got 10 girls waiting. That's probably what they told them. You need to get yeah. out of town, <laughs> go to Rubwa, go to Ahmednagar. We got 10 girls, opium, tonic vine, and you need to disappear for 10 years or something like that. Who knows? Who knows? But hey, one question. Yeah, I, I, I know. So I have a question for you. Did Neanderthals exist? Sorry, uh, shall, shall I say again, please? Yeah, uh, did Neanderthals exist? Yes or no? Shut up. I, I can't hear you. I think I'm in a bad area. On this. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can I join back? I can hear you. Yeah. No I, worries, I, 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 let, let me join back. I can't hear you. Yeah. No I worries. can't hear you, but if you can hear me, please. Please do address my request as well regarding these yaya coming to different channel or doing extreme. These cult people have to understand and they need to go to to Muslim masjid to just have a look. Anybody is allowed that how we are one guy is praying open hand and one guy is praying with a closed hand, you know, Imam Shafi, Imam Malik, Imam Abu Hanifa kind of thing. So that's my message to them. But I try to join you back because I'm right in front of masjid in a bad area for Isha Salah. Please do dua. Ali Bhai, Jazakallah, happy to be on the same platform. Allah give you reward. Thank really, you. really appreciate that. You guys are wow. like, you guys are member, like kind of following the Sunnah of Sahaba because the way they left their parents, their fathers, their brothers uh, on the time of the Prophet, mashallah, look, Allah has chosen you for a very special moment. And, and, and other Qadianis, and there's Dr. Uh, Nabil Abu Bakr came. He needs to understand that, that he's earning Jannah, not Jahannam. You cannot, cannot leave your mother in there. All we need to work for them as well. And Ali Bhai and uh, Shah Sahib, you're doing a Jannah work. May Allah reward you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Jazakallah. Thank you very much. Jazakallah. Thanks, brother. Okay, uh, brother Afsul, you have the floor. What do you have to say? Wa alaikum salam. How are you, sir? <laughs> hey, what prompted me to join you as soon as possible? Uh, I've been listening to this and watching you from the beginning. Uh, when Ali came into this uh, stream and he just mentioned that uh, if Shaitan was a human, then Adam was considered to be a first human. So who came first, Shaitan or Adam? I already said that. I already yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just mentioned it. I just want to elaborate. So it should more. be the other way around. So yeah. Adam al Islam. There was no reason for uh, creation of Adam uh, Adam al Islam then. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it simple. doesn't make any sense. If Adam was first and Shaitan came after, okay, then asking Shaitan to bow Adam because he was already his dad. <laughs> Huh? And if, if, if it's the other way around, for, for example, if Shaitan came first and Adam came second, then how come you are asking the first one to bow down a second one? The, the, the same point which Ali just mentioned. And it's a really, really, really very great point over here. Use your brain. Think about it. You know, <laughs> you will see where these guys are standing. They are standing totally standing on nonsense, fabricated, you know, misguided, what do you call the teachings? And that, what really scares me, people don't think what actually they are believing in. I mean, you know, even with your closed brain and closed eyes, and you cannot believe on anything, you must understand what you're believing, even for the Muslims, even for the Muslims, Muslim must know very well what they're believing in and why they're believing in. That's how they will become Muslim. Not that you just, we are just born Muslims and that's it. We are calling ourselves Muslim. That doesn't make any sense over here. Muslim need to understand this. And so does Qadianis. And br brother, I really say that you raise a lot of many points over here which need a lot of discussion. And I don't think so you will have enough time for this and this stream. But carry on, please. I'm listening to you. I'm watching to you. Great point, Ali Bhai. Very good. I love it. 
And I think we will raise this uh, point everywhere, wherever we go in our streams also again and again and again and again. And let's see what they should say about it. I'm pretty sure their their logic will be absolutely nonsense, base, <laughs> baseless bull BS. Let me, say, yeah, let me say one line on this uh, particular point. Well, they are following that particular Adam. Okay, say so they bowed down to that Adam. <laughs> <laughs> so, exactly. Exactly. That's so my then, closing point. Okay, let me share one more thing before we yeah. close this uh, uh, stream, because we discussed uh, Adam al Islam and the Shaji shared his essay on the screen. Let me share one reference from Mirza Kadiani's book. Uh, Shaji, would you mind to share uh, the reference on the screen? Well, let me say that is from their Rouhani Khazain. It's supposed to be Shatani Khazain, edition number 18, page is 627, right? Here Mirza says, Adam ko ek baag mein sharki taraf jaga di gai thi. So he says, Adam alayhi salam was, were given eastern side, right, in Jannah. So how Mirza came to know Adam alayhi salam was given an eastern side in Jannah? So there is a west, right? East, west, south, north. So how he navigated these, uh, you know, dimensions? <laughs> so that's the sense. question. Doesn't and, uh, Doesn't make and sense. Yeah, listen to the next line. He says, Bas zarur hai ke ye Adam. Ye Adam. He, he's saying about himself, ye Adam bhi mashriki mulk mein hi zahir hota. So he's saying himself that he's an Adam of this time and he appeared in Eastern country like India, right? And he matches, he matches exactly same like Eastern garden, right? In Jannah. Yeah. <laughs> wow, what a logic. So how he came to know Hazrat Adam alayhi salam were living in the eastern side of Jannah. Totally baseless, man. Totally nonsense. <laughs> Very good point. I, I, Bashir, I, I know that you're running out of time, but uh, that's what I want to share my comments with you. Excellent points, man. Excellent point. I love it. Especially, Bashir, you, whatever you said from the beginning, top class, top notch. And Ali Bhai, you just put <laughs> ice on the cream on that, uh, what do you call that? Uh, cream on ice or ice on a cream, whatever you oh, call it. Cherry, cherry on top of the cake, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's really, really great. I love he, it, man. Thank you very much. He, he uh, put the frozen Shazan on top of the cake. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. That would, be ruined. <laughs> <laughs> that would be ruined. <laughs> but anyways, uh, um, ladies and gentlemen, we are over an hour. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Asalaamu Alaikum and peace out and hit the blog. Hit our other channels. We, we are on many platforms across the board. We work with everyone. With that, Asalaamu Alaikum and peace out. Thank you very much, man. Thanks. Walaikum Salaam.